வணக்கம் ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் த கல்ச்சுரல் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் மேன் கைண்ட் இஸ் தி ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் பாட்ரி மேக்கிங் கல்ச்சர்ஸ் சேஸ் பைத்யநாத் சரஸ்வதி இன் ஹிஸ் புக் பப்ளிஷ்ட் இன் த இயர் நைன்டீன் செவன்டி நைன் பாட்ரி மேக்கிங் கல்ச்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் இண்டியன் சிவிலைசேஷன் பாட்டரி ஃபார்ம்ஸ் அ வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் ப்ரீ ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ப்ரீ ஹிஸ்ட்ரி பீங் தி பீரியட் இன் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி வேர் ரிட்டன் ரெக்கார்ட்ஸ் ஆர் நாட் அவைலபிள் வை இஸ் திஸ் ஷார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் பாட்டரி ரிமெயின் பரீட் அண்டர் கிரவுண்ட் ஃபார் மிலினியா விதவுட் எனி டிஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் ஆஸ் ஏ டூ நாட் டிகே லைக் அதர் மெட்டீரியல்ஸ் லைக் வுட் அண்ட் சம் ஆஃப் தி மோஸ்ட் ஏன்ஷியன் டிஸ்கவரி சச் ஆஸ் தி கிரிவிஷியன் வெனிஷியன் ஃபிகர்ஸ் மேட் ஆஃப் கிளே தட் வர் ஃபவுண்ட் இன் யூரோப்பியன் கண்ட்ரீஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் சைபீரியா have been dated to be around 29000 to 25000 BCE Chinese pottery has been dated to 20000 BCE making it one of the oldest in the world while in Sumeria the pottery wheel itself was invented between 6000 and 4000 BCE Secondly almost all the major civilizations in the world that had access to clay developed their own styles of pottery independently and though broken and stored beneath the earth archaeologists could put back together these shards of pottery as if it were a jigsaw puzzle and recreate information regarding the culture the daily habits and customs and rituals of many a civilization so much so that archaeologists classify sites based on the kind of pottery or in other words they help a type of pottery identify a particular site as belonging to a particular culture now if i were to give an example shortugay is the northernmost part of ivc in afghanistan located at around 1900 km away from mohenjodaro and 1200 km away from harappa so how did the archaeologists identify shortugay as an ivc outpost based on the material culture which besides beads and steatite was mostly due to the shards of pottery pottery comes in various colors and are labeled as brw pgw for example in india in the northern parts of the continent painted gray ware pgw is more prominent while in the southern regions black and red ware brw is more prominent and here comes the interesting indus connect brw is also the prominent pottery found in ivcs especially its southmost outpost in gujarat and once again there is another connecting link between pottery of deep south as well as the ivc this is the graffiti markings that are found on potsherds based on these two connects mr balakrishnan in his journey of a civilization put forth a very pertinent question well if a pot connect could be made to the north to shortugai why can't a pot connect be made to the deep south through the southernmost outposts of the ivc itself being lothal at gujarat and daimabad in maharashtra I was very excited when I saw that the distance between Daimabad and Madurai is only 1333 kilometers. Why not? Now, Vincent A. Smith, the noted indologist and art historian from the early 20th century, made this observation and I quote, "Hitherto most historians of ancient India have written as if the south didn't exist." and even reputed archaeologists like d r bandarkar who have recorded the ancient history of india have proven smith's observation to be correct not to mention saraswati himself in his book on pottery making cultures deals extensively with pottery of north east and western parts of india completely neglecting the south k n dikshit about whom we saw in the previous episode even as early as 1913 he made the following observation it would not be too much to hope that a thorough investigation of the tirunelveli regions and the neighboring territories like that of the old port of korkai will one day lead to the discovery of new sites 
which would be contemporaneous with or even a little earlier than the Indus sites. Well, his prophecy is coming true today with the discoveries that are being made in Kiradi and all the other archaeological sites in the Tamil country definitely establishing its antiquity and its link with the IVC as a better fit, also predating it to the Vedic civilization, a cause for concern and discomfort among many a scholar who would still like to believe otherwise. This said and done, the speciality of our culture is that while history and archaeology might have ambiguity and misinterpretations, we are a living testimony to this ancient continuous living tradition. Let us take an example. The graffiti that is found on the pottery in Kiradi is Tamil Brahmi script and in Tamil it is denoted by the, denoted by the term Kiral which means literally to scratch on the pots. More than a hundred pot sherds have been discovered and these reveal a lot of Tamil names such as Adan, Kuviran Adan, Satan, Tisan, Samban, Muran and archaeologists are of the opinion that these are names of common people who simply have scribbled their names on their own vessels that they used. Besides indicating sociological facts like the literacy levels among common people and the fact that education was accessible to all, this points out a very interesting continuous custom that we have today. While clay vessels have been replaced by stainless steel and silver at home, we, especially the ladies of the house, have the habit of inscribing our names on our vessels, don't we? Well, old habits die hard. And in this continuity, we also know that we still make use of our mud vessels, especially in Madurai and down south where around Pongal, we still habitually buy a new pot and we also use mud pots at home during the summer for its cool waters. Now, it is this continuous living tradition that captured the imagination of Stephen R. Inglis, a scholar from the University of British Columbia, Canada, who did his PhD in the year 1984 in the pottery making culture of South India with specific reference to Madurai, where between 1974 and 1984, he did an extensive survey of our pottery culture and established how by the late Neolithic period, that is the first half of the second millennium BCE, black and red ware became the predominant pottery in almost all these regions of the Tamil country. Why? The pots were normally stacked upside down as you would see here before they were fired, fired in the kiln and this led to reduction of oxygen around the rims and the insides of the pot while the outsides remained red. Here is a picture taken by him of a pottery community in Arapalayam where you can see the pots stacked in the same way and the same technology being used. It is also very interesting to note that we make use of many vessels with the same names over the past thousands of years, which has made it very easy for archaeologists to classify the mud pots that they excavate, correlating them to the names of vessels that we use today, as was done by Alexander Rie even earlier in 1895 when he did his excavations in Adichanallur and Perumbayur. Let us go a little into detail here. You know the humble water goat, the Surekai, was initially used to store water. Kudain Dedatadal Kuduvai and looking at this shape, ancient Tamil man made it in clay and named it Kuduvai. From Kuduvai came the name Kudam. From the etymology of Vanappu came Vane, which later became Pane. And Ahandavai, wide mouth is Ahal, which of course today we use to light lamps. And in those days, there were larger plate like Ahals that were named Tahari. And this was used for eating food. Kulumai was the name of large pots that were used to store grain. And 
Thali was the name of large pots that were used to store water. Vonga nilai thali malha sarthi kudayadai nirin madai inar yedutta. These are lines from Sangam literature which attest to the fact that thali was first used to store water. Now later the same thali was used to preserve the bodies of the dead. Well, when they had to store a small child, it was made as large as a water pot. But then larger urns were used to intern an adult and the mouth of the urns were always small, leading archaeologists to believe that the bodies were first excarnated or stripped of flesh and then too only some large bones and skulls were placed inside. Alexander Rie, during his famous excavation of Adichanalur, made the stunning discovery of a cemetery of or an urn field where thousands of urns were buried just six feet apart in an area of over 114 acres. Now, these sort of urn burials have been found all over Tamil Nadu and they have been found in specific regions towards the east and west of Madurai. And this is where it becomes interesting. Stephen Inglis, during his interactions with some of the hereditary Potter communities of Madurai, heard the men say that their forefathers had actually supplied urns for these burials. He presents a detailed study of the pottery community living in the areas of Arapalayam, Villapuram, Kochadai, Mana Madurai, and Vilangudi and even shows this map of Arapalayam from about a hundred years ago where it is shown as a potter's village outside the limits of Madurai town. The following are some of the names that we use to describe the potter, potters. Manmahan, Mannudayan, Vetkovar, Kuyavan, Kusavan from the root word Ku which means earth or man. Another interesting correlate between IVC and Tamil civilization is the social standing of the potter himself as pointed out by Mr. Balakrishnan. In the Vedic culture of the north, the potters were placed very low in the Varnashrama Dharma while in the Tamil civilization they were given a very high status. Airavadam Mahadevan et al who have done a very detailed study of the various inscriptions of the Indus signs, especially the jar signs, have interpreted a couple of seals to mean chief potter and chief priest and have concluded that potters in the Indus community should have enjoyed a very high social standing. In Sangam poetry, we know that Venni Koyatyar was a lady poet who belonged to the Koyavar clan. And even in the Periyaburanam, one of the 63 Nayanmars, Thirunilakanda Koyavanar belonged to the potter's clan. This again proves that during the Sangam times, education was accessible to all. And in one particular song in Purana Nuru, there is this line, Kalam Sai Kove. Kalam being another common word used to denote pottery which also used to denote a ship. Here is used with the word ko which means a king or a chieftain. So that is the kind of exalted status that a potter enjoyed. Why? Because of the ritual significance of the burial urns that he produced. English cites inscriptions that reveal how the kings in those days gave land rights and house sites to the people belonging to different occupations that was called Ayakar and those that were given to potters were called Kusavanilam and Kusapatti and the taxes that were collected went by the names Tirihei Ayam, Kusakanam and during the 14th century during the rule of the uh, Nayak dynasty there was even a Bomeivari on the people making clay dolls. Now here is a picture of the doll making village of Vilacheri where the practice continues to this day, luckily without the Bombay Vari. Coming back to the role of the potter as priest, from a humble potter making clay objects of daily utility to a craftsman while making figurines and toys, he becomes a priest when he makes the images of deities and also becomes a conduit to bring the 
spirit of the deity into the vessel that he has created. This custom in Tamil countries today is known as Kantirappu. His role as potter priest to this day has been acknowledged as he is part of the religious rituals of indigenous communities living here. One of the potter communities, the Pandya Vellala, have claimed how in those days they were also priests in mainstream temples such as the Minakshiaman temple till they were taken over by the Brahmins. And as proof, again, there is found a Kaniyachi, which is a right to temple service and produce from temple lands as reward, which during the Nayak rule in the 16th century itself was changed to mean just right to tenancy. Now, the ritual association of the potter and his clay pot is too strong for us all around us here in Madurai, where we have the Tichati, the fire ritual for the goddess. The Mulaipari or Mulaikotu now is the month of Adi and this will start in all the goddess temples around us. We have the Ahal Vilaku or Kartihai Chatti, the Ma Vilaku Chatti, Kuravi Yedipu, where a votive offering of clay horses is made to the local village deities is very strong in villages around Madurai. And of course, we have our Irvathor Kambala Devam, the 21 village gods with their horses that serve as the vehicle of Vahana or of the deities such as Karpanasami who get onto it and go around in the night protecting their flock. Now, the pot is also used as an element to denote a sacred space and we know that in temple consecrations and many a religious ritual, the kalasam or kumbam, a pot filled with water is associated with divine or royal representation where the pot is believed to contain a divine spirit. And during those days, the Arasani Pane was a royal representation in social functions. Today, in almost all these rituals, the clay pot has been replaced by metal vessels. But there is still one ritual where the clay pot has been retained and that is the ritual of death. Inglis describes how the clay pot here represents the dead man. Holes are made in the clay pot to indicate that his life spirit has been released and then the pot, the mold itself is broken at the time of lighting the funeral pyre, symbolically mentioning that his spirit has been set free. Such being the association of the Tamil people with their roots, I don't think we really have to search for it deep down, it is there all around us. Let me conclude with a very interesting correlate from the Sangam literature to a poem that we have read during our school days. Yavanar nankalam tanda teral ponsai punai kalatthi endi nalum ontodi mahadir madupa. This is from Purana Nuru sung by Nakirar. Here nankalam means a ship and yavanar nankalam meaning ships from Greece and Rome that carried Tan Kamal Teral, cool fragrant wine that was poured in golden uh, cups and served to the rich by beautiful damsels. And in the Adichanalu regions, large clay jars with handles known as amphorae were excavated. These jars were used to store wine in Italian countries. And from the jars excavated at Adichanalur, Chemical analysis of the inner crustaceans of the jar revealed a resin which was a major constituent of the Roman wines produced during the early centuries AD. Now, this was discovered and mentioned as early as in the year 1969 by B. B. Lal. So, here again, proof of Sangam literature being attested to by archaeological finds. Let us explore more of our antiquity in the next episode. Banakam.